So first off, I just want to thank um, Fergal and Roland for kind of inviting me to speak today. Um, really, really honored. Um, I'm don't, I don't do a lot of public speaking, so I will, I will admit I'm a little nervous, so just bear with me. <laughs> um, like he, like uh, he mentioned, my name's Jessica Conrad. I work at Collins Aerospace. A little bit about myself. Um, I started at formerly Rockwell Collins in 2015. And just recently, we had some changes at the company, and we're now Collins Aerospace. So I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I went to school at Drake University, and my degree is in advertising and graphic design. So I kind of wanted to get into marketing and in this field, so I'm, I'm really excited, and I, I love my job. So um, they asked me to talk about um, how Collins Aerospace uses visible thread within the proposal development process. And it took me a while to come up with a topic, quite honestly, because we use so many features of visible thread. We use the compliance matrix feature. We use the acronym tool, um, readability reports. So it was hard for me to come up with a topic. But I, I feel um, the way we add an element of fun into the development process, it's not so, so rigid. Um, I think that's what makes us unique, and that's what I'm going to speak about today. So like I mentioned, um, I started at formerly Rockwell Collins. Um, last year, we merged with UTC, so now we are Collins Aerospace. And that makes us now one of the largest aerospace industry suppliers in the world. We have 70,000 employees now, I want to say, and 150 locations worldwide. So um, a lot of the, the pieces and, and processes we have, we're kind of working now to combine and figure out best practice moving forward as Collins Aerospace. Um, we have six different business units now, aerostructures, avionics, interiors, uh, mechanical systems, mission systems, and power and controls. So my group falls into mission systems. We're a part of business development as the capture center. We kind of work through the entire proposal development process starting very early on, maybe two years ahead of when we might get a request up to the, the proposal delivery. So we have a few different roles um, within our team. So capture managers, they're going to do that, that early on work, the strategy work. Um, they're going to focus on figuring out the customer's most important requirements. <laughs> I think it's OK. <laughs> Um, yeah, they're going to focus on finding the customer's most important requirements. They're going to do a competitive analysis, all of that early strategy work. And then when we get a request, that's when um, my role as proposal manager would come in. Um, we kind of take that capture strategy and then implement it into the proposal. And I uh, manage teams um, through the, the rev color review process. Um, I do editing and formatting um, all of the proposal pieces within the set deadlines uh, that that the customer gives us. And we, we do work in on the government side mostly. So this is usually like 30 or 45 day turnaround times. And then we also have graphic designers who work with the teams uh, and my, myself to develop uh, pro graphics for each proposal that are unique. So this is our, our process. Um, most of you have probably seen these color team reviews before. Um, we do our process based on Shipley. Um, we do add a few pieces uh, in as well. Um, so I won't go into every single color review, but they are listed there if you want to, to read about them. The things I will point out are the black um, triangles. So like I mentioned, we were very, starting very early on in the process. So we'll do um, workshops with the teams when we maybe hear of an opportunity or think there may be something we can pursue later on. We'll do what's called an environmental workshop and that's identifying competition, maybe doing a SWOT analysis, um, and then uh, developing our customer affinity plan. How are we going to contact the customer, talk to them, and, and develop a plan on how to, to move forward? And then maybe when we know the opportunity is real, that's when we'll do a strategy workshop, which is more focused on how are, are we going to promote ourselves and how are we going to potentially win. So we'll do strengths, weaknesses against ourselves in the competition, figure out our strategic intent, things like that. And we developed these workshops, I want to say, five, six years ago. And um, our department's become really known for them. We have executive leadership reaching out and saying, we want teams to get into these workshops because they really are beneficial. Um, something else I'll note, we do what's called a wall walk. 
uh, which is like a midpoint review. Um, this is as time allows, of course, because sometimes we have two weeks or, or less to get a proposal out the door, and that's not feasible to do a midpoint review. Kind of just have to go with the flow there. <laughs> um, but when we do these midpoint reviews, it's to ensure that the strategies we develop are implemented throughout each section. So of course, with every um, process, there are issues. Um, no process is perfect. You know, we can't follow the process 100% with every single proposal. It just doesn't work <laughs> that way sometimes. Um, so we have come up with a list in the, uh, the past couple years of common issues that we face, and we're working towards fixing those or, or making those better. So one thing that we struggle with is our authors for the proposals are actually our engineers. Um, because they are the subject matter experts, we want them to be do the writing because they know it best. Um, they are also sometimes in the bidding process too, because they, they're, they're gonna be doing the work ultimately later on, they're gonna bid as well. So they're doing three jobs at one time during this process. Um, and if they're in high demand, they might be doing two proposals at a time. So they're very, very busy. Um, and because they're busy, um, maybe writing, because it's not native to them, they're, they're engineers by trade, you know, they, they don't want to write. So they, they, they miss deadlines um, occasionally, and that's a struggle. <laughs> um, and, and we also struggle to um, getting them to write some, something, get started, because they have a lot of knowledge, and they don't know how to put it on paper. Um, or they put down too much, so they might put down 20 pages worth of, of something and we only have a 10 page limit. So we struggle there too. And um, with Shipley's process, Red Team is supposed to be a you know, customer ready document that we could technically turn in that day. And because of these other issues that we've been seeing, um, our proposals have not quite been that customer ready document that, that is preferred. So again, that's another issue that we have. So, of course, we look at the issues and then how do we fix them? So one thing we've looked at is our writers kickoff. So how do we get the, the writers started on the right foot? <coughs> Excuse me. So this uh, kickoff happens after Pink Team. So we have our storyboards. Um, we have our outline kind of ready to start writing. So we'll give the, about an hour presentation just on what to expect during the process. Of course, we review our strategies, make sure those are implemented. Um, we give out writing assignments. And then we had this section called focusing on the customer. And this is an example. And this is just one of five slides that we had that was called focusing on the customer. Um, as you'll see, it's oh, text heavy. Um, we give a lot of examples from Shipley's um, proposal guidebook. Um, and you know, we try to explain these, these key things that we want the, the writers to look out for, like you know, make sure you're using benefits before features and benefit measurement proof, passive language. Um, we had a slide on ghosting. Um, but as you can see, we, it's kind of boring. Um, you know, we would get feedback that, okay, you're reading me this slide, and I, I, I'm not a writer by nature, so I don't understand what that means. How do I implement it? Um, I know you're saying benefit measurement proof, but how do I do that? The, in this example, it makes sense, but how, when I'm writing, I don't understand. So we, we got a lot of feedback there, and so last year we went through a process where we redeveloped these, this presentation. So we, we changed the title a little bit. Of course, we still want to go over the schedule. That's important. We still want to go over writing assignments, all the important things, but then we, we turn this focusing on the customer piece into just fun tips and tricks. So this is an example of how we kind of changed it. So as you can see, it's not so text heavy, and it, it's attention grabbing. The headline is attention grabbing, and even more so the graphic, because most formal presentations, you don't see a goldfish in your slide deck. <laughs> um, so it's gonna be come top of mind. You know, they're gonna say, you know, I didn't quite remember everything on that slide, but I remember the goldfish. What, what, what did you, what were you talking about there? So they, they bring it up, um, they remember it. And then um, engineers, you know, they like facts and, and, and figures as opposed to more fluffy knowledge there. So we, we pulled studies to, um, you know, 
give them a starting point and say this is where we're pulling the information from. It's not just, it, you know, it, it's, it is a real problem. So this 2015 Microsoft study, it said that because of the digital um, distractions we have, you know, iPads, TV, internet, um, we now as humans have an eight second attention span, which is shorter attention span than a goldfish, hence the, the title. Um, so that's, that's an issue, and of course, you know, when we look at something, we have one, we give it one twentieth of a second glance before we move on, or decide to stay and read. One twentieth of a second. <laughs> that's not a lot of time at all, so how do we get the evaluator to stay and look at our, our writing and actually want to read it? So then we, we talk about how adding visuals, breaking up dense text, things like that, to really catch our reader's eye and make them want to stay and look at, at our work. So another thing we looked at within um, the writing kickoff presentation was our expectations. Um, of course, each review has its own set of expectations. We have to go over those. So uh, before, of course, we talk about date and time, when it is, what you're expected to do. Um, here, because like I mentioned earlier, it's a midpoint review. Um, we said make sure your work is about 60% complete. And then of course, letting them know pursuit leadership is gonna be looking at this, it's, it's important. Uh, and then if you have graphics, insert them, things like that. Um, we got a lot of hangups on that 60%. They didn't quite understand what that meant. Is it my particular section, half done, so I can have half blank sections and half written? <laughs> um, we, and we got, we got that back. Um, you know, or can I do a bullet list um, just so I have something on the page? Do I need to have fully written sentences? What, what does that mean? So what we did um, to add that element of fun um, is instead of saying this 60% complete, we reference the readability reports of Visible Thread. And we say, okay, when you're writing, we're gonna run your section through Visible Thread. And we wanna make sure in the readability report, no red sections appear. And then we, of course, explain the readability report and give them parameters because they do like numbers and, and points that they can hit. So explain, of course, the, the four colored boxes, what they mean. Um, think of it like a stop sign or a stoplight, <laughs> green, yellow, and red. So green's good, of course. Yellow, cautionary, you might want to look at it and try to tweak a few things, but it, it is okay. And then red, of course, you definitely need to stop and, and look at your work and try to figure out how to fix it. And we gave them goals. So we said for um, long sentences, under 20% would be okay. Um, passive voice, 15% or less is fine. Um, and then with the readability score and grade level, we wanted to um, give them different parameters there because a technical volume, of course, has more um, technical language in it. It's a little bit more complicated because you're explaining something in more detail, so we said for readability score, 30 plus is, is fine there, but in something that can be written in more layman's terms, like an executive summary, that should be 40 or higher. And then same, same kind of concept for the grade level, technical volume can be 11th or 12th grade level, whereas executive summary should really be 9th or 10th grade. And then of course we, we show them examples too, so the first example, obviously, in the long sentences category, we'd have them stop and look at that. Um, you know, 15% could be, could be better, so make sure we we're trying to change that red to a yellow. So the second and third options would obviously be ideal in this case or what we're, we're shooting for. So, of course, this is what we're expecting of them, and then we have to explain how they can get there. So that's when we talk about the individual paragraphs on the readability report, um, how they're color coded as well. Um, you know, passive voice red, long sentences blue, so they can really focus on what particular area they're they're struggling. And and one thing that we really f um, tell them is, you know, when when I'm editing, for example, uh, their work, um, I use a red pen and mark it up and. You know, even myself, I admit, when I got a paperback in high school that had red marks all over it, I took it personally. I was like, what did I do wrong? Why, why do you not like my work? And the writers felt the same way. You know, I, I don't understand my writings. I think it's good. I've got the main points out there. I don't understand why you bled all over my paper. 
Um, so the suggestions that Visible Thread gives are objective. They're not coming from a person to a person. It's, it's the, the software giving that feedback. So it's more objective. They can think about it in, a, in an easier fashion. They, can, they understand that, okay, this is what's kind of the problem, and, I, and it gives suggestions on how to fix it. So it took that human element out of it, and they really appreciated that. And then, of course, there's issues that Visible Thread will find in like your legal disclosures and things, and we tell them to ignore that, of course. So we, yeah, we show them examples, and yeah, that suggestion piece there is what they really liked um, because it gave them a way to improve. And we encourage them to run, the, run their sections through two, three, four times. You know, initially run it through and then maybe edit a few paragraphs and, and, and see how, how the changes are. So we didn't, of course, just implement all these changes um, day one after we decided to, to restructure our writing kickoff. We actually did a trial run. Um, so this was in 2016. We, we did this, um, it was a must win pursuit, um, high dollar value, um, strategically important to the company. So um, this one in particular, there were seven volumes that we had to write and we had 20 authors. So it was, it was a big group <laughs> to work with. There was a lot of um, conf conflicting personalities. It was just an interesting time. Um, <laughs> so we, we implemented these strategies and we found that they actually competed against each other and themselves. So we would all sit in a room and write, and they'd be like, I bet I can get to green before you can. Talking to each other, you know. Um, oh, wow, you're naturally a good writer. Your sections are already all yellow. That's great. They'd give feedback to each other. And also themselves, um, we had people, you know, run the report. Great, I look at it. I'm, I fixed two paragraphs. Can you run it again? I want to see how I improved. Um, they'd ask us to run the report multiple times. So that was kind of exciting for them. Um, and because they were excited about it, because they knew how to improve the, their writing through these suggestions, they actually met their deadlines with ease um, during this process. So it, it made it exciting for them and they wanted to write and kind of figure out how to improve. The, the red team reviews that I mentioned earlier, how they weren't customer ready before. In this case, um, they were um, and we got a lot of feedback because Some, sometimes our reviewers would say, well, you know, I, I'm a grammar Nazi. So when I read something and the first, maybe the first sentence or paragraph doesn't make sense, I have to rewrite it before I can move on. It just bugs me. Well, they said in this case, the writing was consistent. It had one voice and they were able to focus on the strategies, which is what you want them to focus on in a red team review. So, so that, that helped a lot. And then we did ultimately win this particular pursuit. So um, I, th I have to think that Visible Thread had some help in that. Um, one other thing we noticed, and you'll see on the, on the right side there, they actually wanted more specific parameters than what we gave them. So we just said, you know, 20% for long sentences or less is good. As they ran the reports multiple times, they'd be like, you know, I, I've had you run this report three times and I'm still yellow. How do I get it to green? What exactly do I have to do to get that from yellow to green? So we went into Visible Thread in the back, the back end and we figured out exactly the parameters. So we'd say for sentence length, for example, you're at 14 right now, you need to get to 12 to get to green. So they, they really um, liked that and it gave them something specific to shoot for. There we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, we had su such success with this trial run that we decided to use this, um, this kind of process moving forward on the larger pursuits. Um, so we, we, we have measured our success in, in some ways since then. Um, one thing I always like to say is if people are asking you to do something as opposed to you telling them to do it, it's a good thing. So we have authors asking us to run these reports. So I think that's, uh, that's a positive thing. Even on the, pro the smaller proposals where we're not necessarily asking them to hit those target, you know, no red um, sections, um, they're still asking to run it anyway. 
just to see where, they're, where, they're, where they are and ha kind of have a starting point to edit from. Um, my job as an editor is the time is significantly reduced because these 20 um, authors are all following the same kind of advice, so the, the writing is more consistent overall. Um, writing time for me has been cut in half um, on these larger proposals just because the writing is at that much higher level to begin with, so it's easier to edit. Um, the color team reviewers, like I said, they're, they're more focused now on the strategy as opposed to the grammar and sentence length and all that stuff. They can really focus on what they're supposed to during that review time, and they, they appreciate that. They're not bogged down by, by looking at the, the bad grammar. And then we have a higher win rate overall. Um, when I started in the department, our win rate was 30%, which is not <laughs> that great. Um, and now I believe, last I looked, it was like 79%. So 79% of the things that we pursue were winning, which is great. Um, and again, I, did, I think Visible Thread helped a lot because um, the reviews go more seamlessly, the writers are excited, and it, it just makes for a, a better process overall. Um, so that's really all I had to, to talk about. Um, like I said, I think it is unique that we're using a visible thread in this fashion um, to kind of make it fun and exciting. Um, I was supposed to leave a little time for questions, so if anyone has questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. Have you gotten any feedback from the customers who evaluated your proposals? We have, yeah. Um, we take a look at, um, of course, the ones we won and lost. Um, one thing they did mention um, is that the writing is Easy, easier to understand than before. Um, we had the same customer a few times and they said, you know, compared to the proposal you submitted two years ago, this is much easier to understand. We actually know what we're getting now. Um, so that's good feedback we've heard.